What's going on guys? In this tutorial we're going to be reading the error log from a PS3 Syscon. This is going to be used to diagnose faults with the console. The items you'll need for this tutorial are as follows. A USB to serial TTL adapter that can be set to 3 volts. Some breadboard jumper wires. Some solder and a soldering iron. Few different sizes of Phillips and Torx screwdrivers depending on your model of console. Depending on your system, you may also need some thermal paste, as some units require complete removal of the motherboard to complete this process, and a copy of the Syscon Reader software. This tutorial is only going to be following the Windows version of this software, although there are Linux versions available as well, but they're a little bit more involved. First, a little background on this procedure. None of this would be possible without the immense work put in by the fine people over at the PSX Place forum. Without them, we wouldn't be able to properly diagnose the PS3, so go take a look over there if you're curious. This tutorial is going to be broken up into multiple chapters, so feel free to use the timestamps in the description. For those of you who don't know, the Syscon, short for System Controller, is the main power controller in the PlayStation. Part of its function is to monitor and log all the power state related errors. This tutorial will show you how to retrieve this log in order to help diagnose faults with your console. There are two different Syscon types used on the PS3, Mullion and Sherwood. This guide will cover both, however all footage will be of a launch model backwards compatible PS3 that uses the Mullion type Syscon. The Mullion Syscon can be found on these models of PlayStation 3, and the Sherwood Syscon is found on these models of the PlayStation 3. Connecting to and reading from both types of Syscon is almost the same, except for Mullion requiring a few extra steps. So with all that out of the way, let's get started. The first step is to determine what model PS3 you have and follow the correct disassembly guide for that model. You can find out which model you have by the sticker on the rear of the console. Please use this table to correspond your console's model number with the board revision used in your system as some console models used multiple motherboard revisions. For example, my CECHB system is fitted with a COK001 model motherboard. Some models may require completely removing the board from the housing. Once you have the console disassembled, locate the test points needed for your version of Syscon. As mentioned before, there are two types of Syscon, Mullion and Sherwood. For machines fitted with the Mullion-based Syscon, you need to solder an extra wire to the diag point. This diag point is later used to enter internal mode on the syscon. This is needed so we can obtain a complete error log from the system. Sherwood based syscons do not have an internal mode, so this wire is not needed. Moving forward, simply take your jumper wires and cut them in half like shown. On some systems it's advisable to make these wires a little bit longer so you can still reach them when the system is reassembled. These jumper wires have both a female end and a male end. For Mullion systems, keep aside three female ends and one male end for connecting to your USB adapter. For Sherwood based systems, simply keep aside three wires with female ends. This guide is intended to be a permanent install, as it is quite handy to keep these wires fitted to a system for future diagnosis and modification. If you don't want to keep these wires installed in the system, just simply desolder them at the end of the tutorial. The following solder points are for systems fitted with a Mullion Syscon. For COK001 and 002 systems, solder a female ended wire each to SCIX, SCTX and the ground point as shown. Next solder your male ended jumper wire to the point labelled SC diag. For SEM001 revision systems, solder a female ended wire each to the SCRX, SCTX and the ground point as shown. Please also make sure you solder a male ended jumper wire to the point labelled SC diag. Again, for DIA001 revision systems and 002, solder a female ended wire each to the SCRX, SCTX and the ground point as shown. As before, solder your male ended jumper wire to the point labelled SC diag. Moving forward, here are the test points for the following motherboard revisions. Please pause the video on your model of motherboard for a better look. The following diagrams are for Sherwood based motherboards. VER001 
DYN001, SUR001, JTP001, JSD001, KTE001. For all CECH4000 series super slim models, locate the SISCON chip on the rear of the motherboard as shown. The RX and TX pads are located adjacent to the SW chip. Now that we have our wires attached, we can partially reassemble the console. Assemble the console to the point where you can safely connect the power supply, heatsink assembly, and power button board if your console uses a power button sub PCB. Please note, if you remove the heatsink assembly, it is highly recommended to apply new thermal paste. Now that the console is partially reassembled, you should have something that looks like this. Ensure you took note of which wires are soldered to which points, as well as ensuring you can connect the wires to the USB adapter comfortably. Now, pivoting over to the USB adapter. I've included links in the description of the type of adapter used in this guide. This next step is very important, as not doing so will damage the console syscon chip, destroying the machine in the process. Ensure the jumper on the USB adapter is set to 3 volts. By default, these adapters ship set to 5 volts, which is too high for the PS3 syscon chip. Take a moment and triple check that the jumper is now set to 3 volts. Before we connect the adapter to the computer, we first need to install the correct drivers. I have included the drivers for this adapter used in this guide down in the video's description. Just follow the prompts in the driver installer to complete the installation process. Now with the drivers installed, connect the USB adapter to the computer. Next we need to check that the driver is loaded correctly as well as taking note of what COM port Windows has assigned to the adapter. To do this, open up Device Manager on your PC. You can do this by either typing it into the Start Search menu or by right clicking on the My Computer icon on your desktop and choosing Manage. Please note that since Windows 11, the Manage button has been moved to the More Options section of the right click menu. Once you're in Device Manager, go to the Ports branch on the Device Tree. The adapter should be listed as a USB serial port and the COM port assigned to it will be in brackets. Take note of this port as it's needed later. Please note that this port may change after a reboot or may even change when we reconnect the device later. It is handy just to leave the device manager open while we use the syscon software. Next, we need to disconnect the adapter from the computer, as it's unadvisable to connect it to the PS3 while the adapter is powered. This can actually damage the syscon. Moving back over to the console, now take the female ended leads and connect them to the USB adapter like shown. If you're doing this on a mullion based system, leave the male ended diag wire disconnected for now. Now that we have all the wires connected and ensured that the jumper is set to 3.3 volts, we can connect the power to the PS3 and also connect the adapter back to the PC. Do not attempt to start the console during this process, just leave it on the red standby LED. This next section is only for Mullion based syscons. If you have a Sherwood based syscon, you can skip ahead using the timestamps in the description. Once you have the USB adapter attached to the console and PC, go ahead and open the syscon software you downloaded from the description. If you need to, verify the COM port assigned to your USB adapter by Windows and select it from the top drop down menu. The next drop down menu refers to the syscon type. They are as follows. CXR is external mode for Mullion syscons. CXRF is the internal mode for Mullion syscons. SW is only for Sherwood syscons and is not used in this section of the tutorial. For this part of the tutorial, select CXR as this is the current mode your syscon is in. Once you have the correct parameters entered, simply click the button labeled Auth. If all went well, you should get a message that says Auth success. If you get a message that says Auth invalid, Double check the syscon wires are connected to the adapter correctly, including the ground wire. You may also need to swap the RX and TX wires attached to your USB adapter, as some diagrams may be reversed. Once you have gained access to the syscon, enter the following command. Reminder, the following guide is only for Mullion based systems. If you have a Sherwood based system, please skip ahead. In the command text box, type EEP space get space 3961 space 01 as shown 
and click send command. You should get a string of zeros followed by FF. Now type the following command as shown. EEP space set space 3961 space 01 space 00. Triple check that this is typed correctly. We are changing the FF value to 00. Now hit send. To check the value was changed correctly, type the following command. EEP space get space 3961 space 01. Now hit send. You should get back a string of zeros followed by 00. zero. As you can see, the FF value has now been changed to 00. zero. This is going to enable internal access mode. Please note, power cycling the console at the moment will result in an instant triple beep. This is because the checksum values do not match. This next part of the guide will show you how to fix the checksum. Next, turn off the console power and connect the male ended diag wire to the ground point on the USB adapter as shown, and turn the console back on. It will beep three times, don't worry, this is normal. As mentioned before, the checksum doesn't match, so let's fix it. Close the syscon program and reopen it. This time select CXRF in the syscon drop down box and click auth. Next type the command EEP sum and hit send. This will show the addresses that don't match the checksum. The address that we need to fix is the first line after the sum line. Ignore all the other lines. This next section is specific to your console. Do not write what I write. In my system, it was telling me that the address 39FE should have been a different value. Again, this may be different on your machine. Note, the should be values are byte swapped, so they are displayed in reverse order. In the command box, type the following. Type W followed by your address line. In my case, it was 39FE. Then type the value that it should be. In my case, it was 38OF. Again, the should be values are byte swapped so they need to be entered in reverse order. Triple check that you are adjusting the correct values. Next, just hit send. You should get back W complete. This means write complete, followed by mullion in brackets and a dollar sign. You can now power cycle the console and there shouldn't be a triple beep as soon as power is applied. Congratulations, you have successfully entered internal mode. The following section of this guide is specific to Sherwood based systems. If you have a Mullion based system, please skip ahead to the rest of the guide. For Sherwood based systems, ensure that you have connected the ground, RX and TX wires to the USB adapter. Please ensure that the jumper is also set to 3.3 volts. Next, apply power to the console, leaving it in standby mode. With the console in standby mode, connect the USB adapter to the computer and open up the syscon software. Select the appropriate COM port that Windows has assigned for your adapter. Next, in the syscon drop-down box, select SW, then just click auth. If you end up with an auth error, try swapping around the RX and TX wires on the adapter. If all went well, you should now be greeted with auth success. This next section of the guide applies to both Mullion and Sherwood systems. Once you have successfully authed into the system, you can now enter the command to retrieve the error log. To do this, simply type in ERRLOG and hit send. The error log contains the last 32 known errors reported by the syscon. It is important to get a copy of this error early on before troubleshooting the system, as the log contains a fault history of the console, which can help in identifying what happened. Another useful command is BECOUNT to see how many hours the system has been used. This is also very useful information in diagnosing YLOD faults. Another useful command is the bring up command. You can run this command when attempting to boot the console in order to see errors during the power on self test sequence. Lastly, another handy command you can do while the system is running is the TMP command. Typing either TMP00 or 01 while the system is running will report back the CPU and GPU temperatures respectively. This is very handy when working with non-jailbroken systems. Once you have obtained your error logs, you can either reassemble the console completely and just tuck away the wires, or you can go back in and desolder the wires and put everything back the way it was.
When asking for help online, please make sure to copy paste these logs into whatever post you make, as it helps people in the future find answers. Just taking a photo of an error can make it hard for people in the future looking for information on the same error. Lastly, here is a list of error codes and what they could possibly mean. Error 1001 and 1002 are power related for the CPU and GPU respectively. They can either be caused by failed NEC token filtering capacitors or by a fault in the supply block for those chips, or by the GPU or CPU just failing. 1004 is a AC-DC power fault and relates to the main power supply of the machine. 1200 and 1201 are processor overheat errors for the CPU and GPU respectively. This indicates the system may have to be deleted or simply requires new thermal paste, or is overheating due to dust or a faulty fan. 2030 and 2031 are also CPU and GPU thermal related errors. 1203 is the thermal overload for cell VRMs. Only some motherboards have temperature monitoring for this area, namely the launch models COK001 and 002. 1204 is the thermal overload for the Southbridge chip. 2203 is also a thermal fault for the Southbridge chip. 1205 is a thermal overload for the EEGS. This is only found on COK001 and 002 boards with the hardware backwards compatibility. 2101 and 2102 are CPU and GPU related errors. And lastly, 2044 on the Super Slim can be caused by a short in the 5V rail or in the Wi-Fi card. So there you have it, a complete guide on reading the syscon on your PS3 to diagnose faults. If you found this video helpful, please consider subscribing and leaving a like. If you have any questions, leave them down in the comments below, and until next time, See ya.